Tinate shampoo is so mild, you can wash your hair as often as you wish. Containing natural herb extracts, Tinate always leaves your hair silky and shiny with the fresh smell of summer meadows. Tinate, so mild, you can wash your hair as often as you wish. Tinate. A mere month after its UK launch, Autocar called the Fiat Uno the ultimate super mini. Then it was voted Car of the Year 1984. And Car Magazine judged it, quite simply, the best small car yet. Now, for a limited period, the Uno comes with a free two-year warranty and a special service offer. Adding peace of mind to excellence. The Fiat Uno. Now more than ever, setting new standards in value. Exactly a week to recover from that because uh, the next story from Hammer House of Horror is next Tuesday at the same time. Now, tonight's closing program. <laughs> It really was a good idea to take your sabbatical in England. Well, I felt you needed to rediscover your roots. You, you've been in Hollywood far too long. Too long without getting a job. Awful scripts, ghastly directors. Don't think about it. In a year, you'll be a new woman. You'll take them by storm. Oh, Charles, I am lucky to have you. Whatever are your students going to do without you? They'll get by. Let's just concentrate on ourselves. Oh, to be in England, now that April's here. <laughs> I feel as if I'm home again. I know we're going to be happy here. Of course we will, darling. Of course we will. Good day, Mr. Burgess. Mrs. Burgess? Hello. I'm Mrs. Pringle. Will you come in? Pringle. Thank you. You'll bring the bags in. Yes, sir. This way, please. I was um, told in your letter that you requested separate bedrooms. Yes. I haven't been well, and I sleep badly. Up here. It's a lovely room. Uh, now, Mr. Burgess, may I take you to your room? Thank you.
What's his name? Smokey. He lives here. I adore cats. He keeps down the mice. Is there anything else you require? Thank you, no. We'll be okay. I've arranged for dinner to be served to you at 8 o'clock. Very good. Thank you. I don't like that woman. You're tired, darling. She's okay. A strange woman in a strange country. Yes? I'm William. I brought these for Miss Derbyshire. Oh, thank you. Please come in. Darling, we've got a visitor. Come in, come in. Hello. I saw you at the pictures once. I went every night. You were wonderful. <laughs> You're making a picture over here. It's about time we saw another. No, actually, my husband's on sabbatical. We're on holiday. Oh, darling, look what, look what William brought you as a gift. Oh, lovely. Would, would you like some coffee? No, thanks. There's work waiting for me. Well, thank you. Now, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll bring my tools and fix your front door. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Goodbye. You're making a film over here about time we saw another. Oh, honey. It takes a while to adjust to being a has-been. You know that's not true. No, no actress works all the time. You sound so glib saying that. I, I didn't mean to be. We came over here to try to work things out, but let's try to remember that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just a neurotic actress. I love neurotic actresses. <laughs> We'll keep on loving this one. And I'll make it up to you. I promise. I promise. Oh, yes, I thought so. You see, this is Elizabeth's girl. And there was one that... Morning. Oh. Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, yeah, some of our old headstones are quite interesting, aren't they? Yes, we have enthusiasts coming from miles to photograph them. Well, it's a far cry from Forest Lawn Cemetery in California. Yes. Oh, that's odd. It's, it's blank. There's no inscription. Why, why doesn't it have an epitaph? And look, what is this? Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm afraid someone's dumped a dead animal there. I am sorry. I'll get William to dispose of it. <laughs> anyway, this is the uh, grave of Sir Joshua Swan, who was buried over 100 years ago. A recluse. And the last of his line, which was just as well, as he and his forefathers were somewhat unpopular with the locals. Why was that? Oh, it was the days of harsh landlords, I suppose. And there was also a legend. Yes? Anyway, Sir Joshua left detailed instructions regarding his tomb. But when it was finished, the local mason refused to inscribe it. Perhaps they ran out of money. <laughs> he had no family to complete the work and uh, certainly no friends. So over the years, it's become something of a novelty. For generations, the local schoolchildren have made up stories about it to try and scare each other. Anyway, enough of our local folklore. How are you settling in? Everything all right at the house? Oh, yes, thank you. Well, Mrs. Pringle had everything ready for us. Thank you. We'll go along now. Thank you, Vic. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Bye. Uh, William. Would you kindly dispose of this, please? Thank you.
it was a lovely idea. I know you thought you were doing your best for me, but supposing a part comes up, I'll be thousands of miles away from my agent, forgotten. But there are such things as telephones and jet planes. You, you could be in California in less than 12 hours. Yes, looking like the wicked witch of the West with jet lag. You've proven how good you are. Why don't you relax a bit? No career is worth getting neurotic over. Neurotic? Now you're using that word. You forget you only have to teach people how to act. I have to be out there doing it. Sir Joshua Swan, Sir Joshua Swan, don't come out till I've gone. Come to fix your front door. It, um, it hadn't closed properly, so I, uh, I let myself in. That's all right. You're unhappy. Why do you say that? I don't know. I just know things. I like this house. It belonged to the old Swan family. They owned a lot of land once. And folk used to call them the Black Swans. Is that why Sir Joshua had a black tomb? No. Sir Joshua had a black heart. Who did it? You'll never know. Time we both turned in. Charles, I know I was difficult today. I'll be better tomorrow, I promise. Thank you for being so understanding. Sweet dreams, my darling. Truly, I saw it. It was weird, but I did see it. I didn't say you didn't. But you think I'm hysterical. Well, maybe you had every right to be. Oh. I'd calm down, and I'd... I'd better stay with you here for the rest of the night. No, no, don't worry, I'll be all right. No. I'll only be in the next room. I'll, I'll keep the door open. Thank you, Charles. My wife's had a nasty shock. I prescribed something for her nerves. Tranquilizers? Mm, something like that. You think she really saw something? You doubt her? Look, Doctor, I'm a professor of dramatic arts. In my time, I've come to realize that stage people are a very sensitive group. And uh, sometimes things get too much, they're inclined to go over the top. And when they do, they do it with every bit of dramatic art they can muster. Do you think your wife may have invented the whole scene? 
I'm inclined to feel she may have dreamed it all up. But why? She's finding it hard to face reality. The reality being that when she left England to try her luck in Hollywood, she was reasonably successful. But now, she's being passed up for parts she's wanted. You may say, so what? But to an actress who's devoted her life to becoming a star, it's death. But surely... Now, she's bad news. Her last film was a disaster at the box office. No producer wants Marion Derbyshire. <laughs> Can I talk to you for a moment? Of course, I'll be straight down. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Mind if I ask you, it might seem to be an odd question. Is there any place around here that might be haunted? Haunted? <laughs> Why do you ask? My wife, Marion, was frightened last night. Maybe it was a prowler, but she's come to think that the place is haunted. What makes her think that? Well, she's been under a great deal of tension lately, and I thought maybe she might have heard of a haunting or a legend or a story as, as a little girl while she was growing up here, and it surfaced from her subconscious. Well, to my knowledge, there's nothing sensational in the ghostly line around here. I do know the King's Head pub is meant to have a phantom highwayman, but that's probably more to do with the alcohol than any apparition. <laughs> and then, of course, there is the legend regarding our church, but that's hardly a ghost. But what then? Well, more of a vampire, really. Is it to do with that black tomb? You told us kids made up stories about it. Mm. Yes, well, the occupant of the tomb had a rather evil reputation when he was alive. A while ago, I came across a book of memoirs published in 1870 in which there was a reference to something which happened here. Well, was Sir Joshua Swan still alive when it happened? Oh, yes. Apparently, a vampire-like intruder attacked a young woman visitor who was staying in the West Dean house. Go on. Well, she was found in a faint with uh, lacerations on her throat as though clawed or torn by sharp teeth. Suspicion fell upon Sir Joshua, but there was no proof. He died shortly afterwards. As I told you, no one would inscribe his tomb. Still, better than a stake through the heart. It's odd that West Dean House should be mentioned. I wonder if Marion ever heard that story. I wouldn't have thought so. It's pretty well forgotten now. And keen as I am on local tradition, if it hadn't been for that old book, I'd have thought of nothing more scary about that tomb than what I've learned from the children's chantings. Well, I'd, I'd love to read that book. Do, do you have it available? Yes, it's still in the vicarage. Would you like to see it? looked everywhere. There's nothing. But we both did see something. Well, for my money, it's a peeping Tom. Usually they just want to look, nothing more. You did say you'd opened your curtains? Yes. Well, in future, I should keep them closed. It lessens the temptation. But if anything more happens, just pick up the phone. We're within easy reach. Sir? 
Thank you. Madam? Professor, may I suggest you take your wife away? Give her something to take her mind off this dreadful experience. That's, that's exactly what I'm going to do. No. Darling, I think it's better we return to California. We are going to stay here as planned. But what about the Prowler? Some poor lunatic who will be locked up before long. Why should he spoil our holiday? No. No. It's settled. I suppose you've no idea. After talking to the vicar, I have. But it's, it's unthinkable in this day and age. game are you playing? He made me do it. He? Who do you mean? His voice came from the tomb. Are you trying to tell me some voice, some voice ordered you to attack my wife? It's true! When I work here, I hear this voice comes into my head. You know what he was. Blood, so that he can come back. Those dead animals. It was a blood sacrifice. He needs the blood of life. But it doesn't work with animals. It's not the proper blood. So you wanted to use human blood? You wanted my wife Marion for the sacrifice? Had to be someone beautiful. My God. Help me. Oh, it's over, honey. It's, it's all oh, over. I thought making that statement would go on forever. Even the policeman was exhausted. I suppose they'll lock him away for a long time, poor William. Oh, when I think of what might have happened. Oh, well, as you say, it's over. Let's drink a toast. Of course. To the rest of our stay at West Dean. Yes, to the rest of our holiday. <laughs> <laughs>